No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today, I'm here with AD, bright and early on a Tuesday morning, mm -hmm. because he told me that he had an important interview that we needed to do. Yes. Introducing Kat. Hello, hello. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Excited to have you Thanks here. Thanks for vouching for me. And oh, yeah. <laughs> for, for the record, you're eight and a half months pregnant, so this could literally go down at any time. Uh, I hope it doesn't. I hope the <laughs> baby goes. Oh, if it right now, we'd be the goddad. Viral. <laughs> Got a few more God weeks left. It. But yeah, I You could be I'm the doctor. 34 weeks. Uh, no, I ain't going to do all that. 34 weeks in. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling like compared I feel, to... I feel good. I've been like staying really busy this pregnancy, so it's been flying by. Like, literally flying by. Really? You're not mm -hmm. worried about, like, overworking yourself while you're pregnant? Is that a concern? Um, I think I know my limit. I don't think I'm there. I oh. think I do good staying busy, though. Right. Yeah, but if I felt overworked or, like, drained or, like, you know, unhealthy, then I would slow down. Right. But everything's been going at a decent pace, so. And you're going back to back with this one. Yep. You had a kid and then you had another kid right after. Was that the plan or it just happened? It was not the plan at all. Um, my first one, Jackson, he was born June 3rd. Uh -huh. um, I enjoyed about three and a half months, four months of <sighs> not being pregnant. And then I was pregnant again. <laughs> Be real. Was it like the first time that he went back in there? <laughs> <laughs> or you think it was like the third time like can you guess like no, we as soon as we got the clearance from the doctor we were you know okay back so yeah it wasn't the first time <laughs> right okay yeah just... but but what i was told by the doctor was that um as long as you're breastfeeding you can't get pregnant Really? Or it's very, very, very unlikely for you to get pregnant. Right. So I was breastfeeding, and then I had literally just stopped, like just finished, and then I was pregnant. Wow. Yeah. So Damn, breastfeed so as long as you can. You it's, chose it's birth to only breastfeed for a couple months. Um. No, my baby stopped. Uh, he stopped on his own. Yeah. My yep. kid's wow. still going he crazy. Wanted, he wanted the bottle. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Yep. And then like. Pumping is a whole nother process, like to produce that much milk, like where you can fill up like an eight ounce bottle. It's like a whole thing. So right. we had to kind of wean them onto a formula. My kid is so reliant on the boobs. Still? Oh, yeah. Year and a half <laughs> in. Wow. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anytime she gets upset about anything, it's just immediately to the boob. Really? Oh, yeah. That's how it was for me for four months. But then I don't know what happened. Wow. That's mm -hmm. cool. So can we talk about uh, where you're coming from? What was your upbringing like? Um, so I'm from Chicago. Um, my upbringing was pretty cool. I grew up, um, I'm the only girl and the baby. I got two older brothers. Um, so I was kind of like tomboy stuff. Um, and then I went to study at Mizzou. That's where I started tattooing in my dorm rooms. Mm -hmm. And then that's where Cat Tat was born. Where, where did you go uh, or what did you go to study in college? Math. Math. Yep. So I got my scholarship in math. I was going to be a math teacher, a high school math teacher. Were you always gifted with math? Yeah. Really? Yep. 35 times math. 35. Uh, don't do that ah! to me. Don't <laughs> do that spot. to me. <laughs> On the spot. Mathematician. <laughs> that was 30. I'm not like that. <laughs> it's been a long time, okay? I ain't been in school. I ain't opened up a textbook in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> 35, Judge, 35. I can't even do that in my head. I'm Me gonna be neither. I don't know what the fuck it is. That's confusing. <laughs> um, but that's interesting because I felt like I was always like a pretty good artist and a good writer. Mm. But my like math and science part of my brain, it just never worked for me so like th yeah. that's interesting that you like go to school for the most analytical technical thing right and then you start pursuing your artistic yeah. vision while you're in the dorm room yeah a lot of my professors used to tell me that like math and art most people it's either one or the other but right. math and art were always like my two strong subjects so wow yep and i started in my dorm room and then i became like the tat girl on campus who put you on to tattooing in the first place or who, who even um, threw this idea out there so i got my first tattoo when i was 16 and ever since then i was just intrigued with it and then being like an art student in high school everybody was like can you draw my tattoo for me? Can you draw my tattoo? So I was drawing like little tattoo designs before I even graduated high school. Wow. So when I turned 18, I was like, I'm gonna be a tattoo artist. And you know, like when you go to college, like away from home, nobody really knows who you are. Mm -hmm. You can like kind of reinvent yourself. I was like already introducing myself as a tattoo artist. I'm right. like, yeah, I'm from Chicago, I'm a tattoo artist. So when my tattoo kit got there, 
I had like all these people at this big university like anxious to get a tattoo from me. How and long then, did it take for you to actually learn how to use it? Because I feel like that's got to be like the biggest challenge, right? So at first. my first attempt was like a fail. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> it was like a lot of trial and error. And then during the breaks home, I would go to Chicago where um, I knew a lot more tattoo artists, like street tattoo artists that were more open to teaching me how to use my machine. Mm. So then by the time I went back to school for the next semester, I knew how to actually apply a tattoo and make it heal and actually do, you know. And I was gonna say that because my little brother, you know, he was real good in drawing and he was like, I'm about to start tattooing people. And he goes to the hood, everybody's lined up to get these tattoos. Mm -hmm. And I say, everybody shit scabbed up and bubbled up. <laughs> <laughs> I say, it's, it's not just easy as just being able to draw. Yeah. You gotta know the skin patterns. Yeah. You gotta know the right, what's the, uh, the little boches to do? No, it's not no Sharpie. <laughs> My brother fucked a lot of people up. People are still mad to this day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But so how did you like, so you were doing like bad tattoos on people to start? Did you, did you practice on, what do they practice on pumpkins and shit? Um, I never really did that. I had a lot of friends and I was just like a cool chick so people were like yo I don't I don't care cat like we were 18 in college like people were just anxious to get tattoos and right. I was barely charging anything so they didn't care wow. um but I just kept getting better and better and then after maybe three years I was like I could be really good at this if I quit school like I'm a half-ass student right now and I'm a half-ass tattoo artist like <laughs> something's got to give so finally my parents gave me that support like look you're just out there wasting money um, you know, if you're gonna do it, like, just do it. So I dropped out of school my senior year because I wasn't gonna graduate on time mm -hmm. at all. And then I went back to Chicago, got hired in a professional shop, and that's when my stuff just kept elevating. Had you tried to like go into a shop early on? Because that's one thing about tattooing is that it's like the most gatekeepy ass shit yes. in the world where they expect you to sweep the floor for a year before mm -hmm. they'll even let you touch the machine, right? Yeah, so I, my first attempt at a tattoo, um, my machine just blew out. I didn't know what happened. So I looked up and my uh, college was in a small little town, Columbia, mm. Missouri. So I took my kit to this tattoo shop and I was like, hey, like, I'm here, I go to the university, like I study, they asked me what I study for one, and I was just like, yeah, I'm trying to tattoo, and they're like, why are you trying to be a tattoo artist if you go to school? Like, why are you trying to tattoo <laughs> if you study math? Like, they were just looking down on me like, you know, you better be careful, you can get in a lot of trouble. I thought they were gonna call the police on me. Like, I'm like, I better get the fuck out of here. They probably Whoa. would. <laughs> yeah, so I left that shop, and that's when I just, you know, waited till I got home to Chicago, and I knew, you know, like the artists that were tattooing out the cribs, that would be cool to, you know, show me like how to set my stuff up. So and you start just doing tattoos all day, every day in the shop, or or what was your day to day like? Um, after I dropped out. Yeah. Once yeah. You, once you get into the shop. Yep. So I got hired in one shop, and then I got hired in another shop. So I was working part time at two different shops, but I was so popping, like just because I had, I guess, my relationships. Like I knew a lot of people. Like I had a long client list. Um. So I was just hustling. Like I was booked and busy at two different shops. Um, and then that's how I really got good. I wanted to work at those two different shops because both owners had two completely different styles. And I wanted to learn from both of them. So This is an honest question because I really don't know the answer. Is tattooing like, are there like black style shops and white style shops yeah like segregation this, well not like segregated but like you know Jesus stylistically Christ, i just feel so, like there's there, there seems like there kind of are like two yeah. different style shops so when, in a way right when i was coming up um because i started again 12 years ago there were not any black shops for real mm. um so that shop that i walked into in columbia missouri was absolutely a white shop you know and you can feel that energy black tattoo artists at the time were looked at as scratchers because mm. we're not professional. We just tattoo in our basements and stuff. But the reason why is because those white shops were very closed off. Mm. Like they were not just open to just hiring like black artists. But I've seen over the years, like now there's so many black shops opening up. Like I'm the first black woman to own a shop in Beverly Hills. Wow. You know, like you didn't have that 12 years ago. Congratulations. So, that, thank that's you so fire much. right there. That. That's and impressive. the first black woman to be pregnant on No Jumper to get an interview. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fire. That's big. Thank you. Let me ask you this. Cause I remember asking the, like a dude who did a lot of my tattoos. I asked him like, is it different 
tattooing black skin like like is it something that a lot of tattooers just can't do and he's he's told me he's like honestly early on i was doing it and i didn't know what the fuck i was doing mm -hmm. and now he looks back on that like fuck i wish i understood like what's that learning curve like in terms of learning how to tattoo on dark skin yeah so um for me i started off with all black clients pretty mm. much all my clients are black so my style just developed that way um, I know how to make something pop from a distance. You know what I mean? Like you're not gonna go in with like, it's just different. So I started off in that. So I never had to like, you know, adjust myself to learn that. I actually had to adjust myself to learn how to tattoo white skin right. just because m most of my clients were black. Um, but I think the style is just like zooming in, more contrast, you know, things that will stand out from a distance on black skin. Like mm. you can't do something super, super tiny on black skin like you would do on white skin, like a quarter size face that might heal good on you, but not on him. Mm. You it know, ain't. with you, I'm going to do a bigger portrait with like and leave more of your skin open. So it really like stands out and you can really see like what that is, you know, and I think that's kind of how my style of tattooing really developed. Is this true? Because I always heard this. I don't know how true it is that the darker the person is, you can use green ink on their skin and then make it look like it's black. No. Okay. No. Nope. They got I, me for I've years. I've never heard that. Interesting. I haven't heard yeah. that one. You don't want like <laughs> green looking ink. Would you suggest someone with skin as dark as his get color in their tattoos? Or do you feel like once a person's skin is dark enough that getting color doesn't look good? Um, there are certain colors that will look better. Like I, if you wanted like a yellow rose, I would advise against it, you know, mm. but I would really advise against that for you too. Just because I think yellow doesn't set well. Like got I, yellow. I, I, I got a little bit of yellow. I, don't know. I got some color, but that shit goes away. Yeah. Like a little bit of accents. Like, I have yeah. a, a little yellow rose, but I like how my black and gray roses just look better. I'm a black and gray artist mm. more so. So I'm kind of biased, I guess, in that so are your, are your color tattoos from like earlier in your life before you kind of decided on black and gray? Um, yeah, I really don't have that many color tattoos. This was done by a friend of mine who actually did this painting and he's a tattoo artist as well. And I was like, I want that tattoo. So that's the only reason I got this. And it hurt like hell. Too. It, is the fact that you're not crazy tatted up, is that you showing self-control because aesthetically you like the way it looks or have you just not got around to it yet? Um, I think I haven't gotten around to it yet. And now that I'm a little older, like my pain tolerance is lower. Mm. It's not worth it. <laughs> like I can't, I hate getting tattoos. I always have, but I've always wanted it that, that bad. So yeah. I don't know if I'm going to finish this sleeve. Like it's not a priority to me. When I was younger, getting tattoos seemed like an emergency like i gotta do this yeah. like, and, and also i was just so young and like passionate that mm -hmm. like i could just get a tattoo or whatever and now it's like i'm older and i'm just like what the fuck would i get a tattoo of like yeah it's just not <laughs> anything i feel that strongly about i'm yeah. still uh afraid to get a tattoo sober i ain't never got one mm. but i still want to get a lot of shit done so he's that yeah. dude drunk as shit sloshing around the tattoo uh spot just <laughs> yeah. annoying everybody knocking, knocking, shit, knocking over. shit over i'm used to those though like i have to have a few drinks when i'm getting tattooed. there we go like i can't sit there and get a tattoo See? let's talk about this because I, my whole life i've had people tell me like oh like you know what's it like getting tattooed and i say like well usually i get kind of fucked up for it anyway and they're like oh, you can't do that like if you if you get drunk then your blood is going to be thin or if you take pills then your blood is going to yeah. be thin bleed more. so the my, reason for that is that's what you guys tell people because you don't want them showing up drunk no, right no no so back <laughs> in the day when i first started tattooing okay there were coil machines you walk into a tattoo shop you hear those loud ass you know mm -hmm. like those machines that really hit and like make you bleed like i've gotten a couple tattoos like that like 10 years ago okay so Back then, you don't want to be fucked up because your blood will be thinner and you'll bleed more mm. and the healing process could be a little different. But tattooing has changed so much over the years that now most artists are using the rotary machines. They're silent. Like you're barely bleeding during a tattoo. Mm. The healing process is so much smoother. So you can have a few drinks. I shouldn't say this on the record. Ah. But, because, but is part of it still that you don't want to have a whole tattoo shop full of drunk ass customers exactly. because it's going to be annoying as yeah. shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We've had a couple of experiences like that where a woman fell off the chair. It's like, <laughs> oh, hell no. No, lady, you got to go sit in the back, go to sleep before you drive home. <laughs> yeah. And you just stop a tattoo at that point? Uh, it's over? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Interesting. Okay. So uh, how do you, oh, yeah. How do you feel about the numbing 
creams? So a few artists in my shop swear by the numbing creams. Um, one of the artists, Nelly, she'll have you come in an hour early for your appointment, numb you up, wrap you up, put a movie on for you, and let you chill, and then she'll start the process. That's part, like part of her process. Right. I never used it. Um, I don't think I've ever even gotten it used on me, but it's a preference thing. Right. Like, I don't think it's that serious. Do people come in pre-numbed up? Like with yeah, the, yeah, I've had that happen before. Because I've had a couple of tattoo artists just offer it to me, and I did it, and it was fucking amazing. And I was like, really? why the hell was I getting tattoos without this shit all those years? See, I've gotten a tattoo with it, and it didn't work for me. Really? So It didn't work for me either. Yeah. But I heard mm. you're supposed to do it for like an hour for it to yeah, sink yeah. in. Yeah, you got to mm. sit like, for a while. They would like break the skin, rub it on there, yeah. yep. and then start doing it. it. And it's, it's like, get uh, in your pores. So I've used it like that. Like if I'm doing a big back piece and we're getting to the final stretch and your skin is already open and it's really killing you, then I'll put some numb cream because your skin's already open. Mm. So it's going to take the numb cream. But I don't use it. Like I don't have numb cream just in my station. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you have any rules for what you will and won't tattoo? Like, for instance, would you ever tattoo, mm. like, something killer on someone's forehead? No, back in the day I would have. <laughs> I'm telling you, back in the day I would tattoo, like, whatever. I was just thirsty to right. do the tattoo. But now I've reached a point where people are coming to me for my style. And, right. like, you know, so I don't have to deal with that anymore. They're not just making up crazy ideas? Yeah. Has everybody ever did that? You was like, I can't do this tattoo. Um... I turn down a lot now, um, but I've done also done some crazy things. Crazy as one. Um, let's see. Just say it. <laughs> Come on. You. So one of my clients a long time ago got a picture of R. Kelly peeing <laughs> on a on a fire hydrant. He was peeing <laughs> on a fire hydrant. I have a friend who has that tattoo too. It on might a fire be him. hydrant. Catfish. Yes! Yes! Oh, I did oh that my tattoo. God. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> How do you know catfish? What the fuck? <laughs> it's a small world. Um, what the fuck? I'm like thinking in my head. I'm like, could there be two people who have that fucking tattoo? <laughs> no, that's tattoo? like, that's fucking crazy. But he's had this for a long time. Yeah, I did that like 10 years ago. Whoa. That's so crazy. It's a small world. How do you know him? He just came in? Um, so I used to work at uh, Lacuna Artist uh -huh. Lofts. Okay. Are you familiar in Chicago? Um, well, oh. they, they used to have, um, it's, it's like a big lofts with like the tattoo shop. They had like a BMX. Um, yeah. The like bakery skate place. Um, yeah, it's the bakery. It was called the, it was Brian Kaczynski is the guy who was running yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, he's a good friend of mine. I, I went him. to his wedding. Yeah, yeah. I know him. Um, wow, small world. He made me. Uh, um, he does like the wood designs. Okay. Wait, wait, no, no, no. I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking. People. I don't think so. That might be somebody <laughs> else. Okay. Well, anyways, they used to all hang out over there. Right. So all kinds of people used to come in the tattoo shop and like we'll get to know him. And he came and got that tattoo from me. Wow. Yep. Small world. She's in the BMX game. <laughs> That's, That's a distinctive tattoo. Tell right him there. I said what's up too. Super cool dude. <laughs> I had, okay, I was getting tattooed at one point by this guy in Hollywood. And one day I look at his Instagram and I see that he has tattooed a fucking giant swastika on a dude's head oh and posted goodness. it on Instagram. So I had already been tattooed by this guy a couple times. He's working on something. And I'm like, so you're a Nazi? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, I, I'm like, because I know I'm going to have to go back to this guy at least one more time to finish the tattoo I've been working was on. Was he a nice guy? Oh, no. He was a nice guy. And that's why I was a little surprised. I'm like, you don't seem like a fucking Nazi. Yeah, he's giving you a good deal and for a so reason. I go in one more time to get tattooed and I mention it to him. I'm like, yo, so I saw that uh, tattoo on your Instagram. I'm thinking like, okay, either he's a Nazi or... He's just down to tattoo whatever, which is. Well, why would he even post it? Why would you post exactly? And then he goes, "Oh no, nah, that was this little uh, like Japanese guy. Like that's their fucking thing, oh, whatever." Oh yeah. And I'm like, "Oh, they get that on them?" No, it's reverse. It's it's not the it's the, it looks like identical to that symbol, but it's reverse. Was it? Yeah, oh. it's reverse. It looks like it. If was anybody... I really dumb enough to not notice that it was reverse? <laughs> that's interesting. No, 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 because I've had this girl um, come and she got a whole Buddhist uh, side piece and mm. it was holding up that symbol. And I was like, what the hell? She broke it down for me and like showed me the research on like what it really means. Wow. Um, yeah. That's yep. crazy. Two completely different meanings. 
but that's very crazy. crazy. <laughs> but okay, so you're working in this tattoo shop for a while. Uh, how's how's that go? Are you working two tattoo shops? I think is where we left off. Yeah. Yep. So I was working there, um, and then I started working downtown at Lacuna, where mm. I, I met Catfish. Right. At the tattoo shop Nine Mag, and that was like the shop of like all the best like young black tattoo artists in Chicago who were like popping. It was like literally like all five of us, our names were like buzzing and, and like people would try to put us against each other. Like, oh, don't go to her, go to him. Don't go to him, go to him. Like, but collectively, like we took over, we were like the first black tattoo shop in Chicago and just killed it. It was called Nine Mag. Right. And then after like a year and a half, that's when TV discovered us and we mm. got the TV show. Okay. Mm-hmm. Damn. So, what is that experience like, though? Just like going into the tattoo shop every day and like really having all these people that are super talented, and you guys just feel like you have a real wave going. Was it just like yeah. genuinely exciting as fuck to wake up it and go was. to work every day? It was living a dream, like really? living a dream. We were like rock stars, like legit rock stars. We would finish tattooing and like you know go to the clubs and be gifted our own sections. Like we were like our own little local celebrities. This is before TV. Wow. You know, it was like, what year are we talking? 2013. You got all rappers coming in, and everybody out in Chicago who's yep. doing something. Everybody, King Louis, Lil Dirk, G Herbo. Really? Everybody was in IMAG. Wow. Mm hmm. That's sick. Yep. And then, okay, TV comes calling. Mm hmm. And what, what's the offer like? And are you are you the one negotiating, or like like who, who's who's kind of in charge of the deal? So we were just all very excited at the time. Um, I hear that breath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> we were all super excited so um we didn't have like the best lawyers negotiate our contracts it was um what's it called united nations deal like everybody's offered the same deal you know not much um but we just knew it was gonna be like our moment to shine like really show our talents on tv mm. so we just signed away right. and then after it was a hit that's when i lawyered up and you know, everybody started indiv individually negotiating their own contracts. So what was shooting it like? It was great. I feel like because we were so um, established before TV, like it wasn't like a show of like casting people, like mm -hmm. now casting for this show and we're going to hire this stranger and this stranger. Like they, the cameras really fell in on like us and like just kind of dissolved. Like we forgot that they were there. Right. That's why our show was so lit because like, literally the camera just like disappeared so <laughs> it was more like them just hanging out and filming whatever was happening versus mm -hmm. them like because you know I, i've watched a bunch of tattoo stuff on tv over the years and it kind of feels like over the years it's become more like a lot of reality tv where it just starts to feel more and more like look at this wacky situation that like right. me as a person who kind of gets out tv works i'm like there's no way that this actually organically just happened like clearly you guys are just <laughs> picking out fucking freakish people to bring in but this was right. like more natural was that yeah. that was always the idea it was very very natural um they would set like we would all have call times like look hey you guys got to meet here at this time mm -hmm. and talk about this talk about what happened yesterday right those were like the you know the stage but as we got more seasons and they had to keep it going they had to kind of throw in like production got more heavy-handed mm. yeah Interesting, where they're just trying to like get the ratings up at a certain point. Yeah, like, trying to keep it going and mm -hmm. trying to like craft story because once everybody gets a platform, now you get to see like what people do with their platforms, and you know now you're not just dealing with regular like street kids, you're mm -hmm. dealing with talent. Mm -hmm. So and who can actually negotiate right. and start to know their own worth? Exactly. Right. Yep. So I always wanted to move to LA and open up my own shop, but being the only female tattoo artist you know in chicago like that didn't work for blacking chicago mm. so that's where my departure from blacking chicago came but so how many seasons do you do in chicago i did three three seasons mm -hmm. and so by the third one how much more are you getting paid than the first one uh by the third like 10 times more mm, no not 10 times more okay um but definitely like more than triple and did this totally change your life in terms of like you just blowing up on social media and just having way more people just concerned with what you have going on? Yeah, definitely. Like I've always had dreams of 
having a shop in California or just doing tattooing at the highest level. Like when I dropped out of Mizzou, I promised my parents, like, look, this is not going to be a hustle. I'm going to make a career mm -hmm. out of it. Like, I'm going to be successful. So for me, like when the TV came, it was just like my moment. Like, mm -hmm. this is the platform that I need to get to where I want to go. Right. So, but yeah, it was absolutely um, game changing. Right. Mm -hmm. As a tattoo artist, when do you start jacking your prices up? Like, because at a certain point, you just have so many clients yeah. that you can kind of say, all right, I'm charging more, right? Right. So when I was in the dorm room, I was charging $20, $30, $40 um, because I was in the dorm. I wasn't a professional and like, you know, you get what you pay for. But then once I got into a professional shop, the price went up because now I'm around other professionals. I'm in a professional shop. You're no longer coming to my dorm. You got to give the shop their cut. Exactly. Mm. So it goes up. And then location. So in Chicago, you're dealing with one price point, but then after being on TV and moving to California, like in owning a shop, because really when I m first moved here, I went broke. I thought because I could be on TV, because I was on TV and that I thought I would just be booked up anywhere in the country. And I thought that I could just make it out here. And that wasn't the case. <laughs> nope. Every inquiry was like, hey, I'm in Chicago. I'm in Chicago. So nobody even really knew I was in L.A. Because mm. people saw me on Black in Chicago. And the show's still running. So they're like thinking that this shit just happened. Exactly. Mm. So I came out here, fell flat on my face. Um, really? So what was that like? You, you, you tell the TV show that you want to do your own shit in L.A.? Mm -hmm. And they just agreed to just give you like a spinoff on its own? Or mm -mm. is it like a segment of the existing show? So I left Chicago and they were considering it um, and it didn't didn't work out. So I quit back in 2017 and I'm just now returning to TV this year. Oh, OK. So I cut ties completely. Um, it wasn't like bad blood or anything. I just, you know made my exit and then I opened up my shop and at that point I had my own platform on social media so people followed me like people were excited to see me leave Chicago and the toxicness and open up my own shop so I just posted everything like when I got the empty location I posted that I just took people along on the journey and that's how people realized like no nah, Kat moved to LA she's opening up her own shit mm. and now we're going on four years TV came back around right so it's like you really got to follow your heart. That's like, fire. Mm -hmm. But so you fell on your face. Was it like you just opened up a store out here and nobody came? Or what was no, this like? No, I was like? tattooing because um, I, I was seeing so much stuff on Instagram about like live work lofts and seeing so many tattoo artists who had their own like, I'm like, all the raw ass tattoo artists that I follow like weren't in shops. They had mm. their own private studios. And then after doing more research, I'm seeing that they're in live work lofts. So I got me a nice live work loft with my savings and then to maintain it, like you need that LA clientele. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have that. So I had to sublease my place for a while, go back to Chicago, hustle for a few months, get my money up, come back here. And that's when I invested in my shop. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then that was like the major move that people paid attention to. So that attracted um, the top artists and the clientele and everything just started to roll for me. And wait, so where'd you open up in LA? Um, Beverly Hills. On oh, Pico so you and went Robertson. straight to Beverly Hills. Yeah. You were never in Compton. I thought you said you were Black Ink Compton. No, the no, show. No, no, no. Oh. I got homies from Black Ink Compton. Oh, okay. You give it. You. I think you talking about Kiki. I thought that this was gonna involve her going to Black Ink Compton at a certain the point. The show, the nah. TV show that I'm on now is Black Ink Compton. Oh, yeah. but then you are just in Beverly Hills on the show. Okay. Yeah. So I thought Black Ink okay. Compton is already established. They're in their second season. Right. Mm -hmm. And they called me. Okay. You know. I know like half the cast. I was supposed to be. I was supposed to get an appearance last season, but uh, I forgot I had to do something. Yeah? Yeah. Well, maybe I'll come up here. What do you have season. to do to get the shop going in Beverly Hills? Like, it seems like it would be super expensive for the rent and everything. Like, how, how'd you go about doing this? Um, so I found the location. I had enough for the down payment. Um, you have to make sure that the zoning is right for it, that where you're at actually allows tattoo shops because uh -huh. there's not any tattoo shops in that area. Um, and then I just calculated what the rent would be, how many artists I need to make that rent and make some profit and just tattoo my ass off right. <laughs> pretty much. Mm -hmm. how, how hard is it to find artists? 
So I had like a dream team because, like I said, there there were not many black tattoo shops. Mm. So in, like I said, the, the stigma or people think of like black tattoo artists, they think scratchers. So for me, my whole vision was to make like an elite, top notch shop like full of artists of color. So I already knew the top artists that were doing their own thing, like on their own, killing it. And I hit them up individually and like sent them an email and told them I wanted to sit down, talk to them, tell them what my vision was. And I would take them to lunch and they were all for it. Like I got super, super blessed. So I didn't have to post like now hiring and deal with like a whole flock of, you know, artists. Like I had a dream team and it just like came together like that. Is it tough being a primarily black tattoo shop in the middle of Beverly Hills, which is a primarily white area? Um, it's, it's in the beginning, we dealt with like some blatant like racism because mm. it's just a very, very, um, it's like a Jewish community too. So on top of being a black tattoo shop, just a tattoo shop period, like the Jewish community, like they don't, um, mess with not, tattoos. Not all that welcoming to anyone. Yeah, in at all. Yeah, they're not really fucking with you. Yeah. Gosh. So they like we've had a lot of um, you know racial slurs at the parking lot behind the shop was just like OD because we have like a couple of the Jewish markets right there. Really. So like when we're parking, you know, and getting out and going into the shop or like that parking lot just gets hectic. So like with the traffic, like we've had people say like get out of here, nigga. You know, just like Dang. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Wow. It was crazy. It was very, very crazy in the beginning. Damn. Mm-hmm. But the the business is going good at this point. Yeah, it's going great. Right. Yep. Now that's, that's like our block. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So at any point, do you feel like you are gonna get big enough that maybe you won't be tattooing all the time, or is your heart still in like doing this all day as often as possible? Um, that's exactly the goal. Like mm -hmm. that was always the goal. I've been tattooing for twelve years, and um, I, I feel like I'm finally starting to get there. Like I've been blessed to you know have a baby and focus on this pregnancy and you know check in on the business and make things running and not have to worry about tattooing every day mm. so I'm finally getting there but that's always the goal like I want to I don't want to have to tattoo right I want to do it like when I want to yeah like what's the most you've ever been doing it like 40 hours a week or do you end up doing more than that um I would have like a whole week booked of like 12 hour tattoos. Wow. Eight hours, maybe like an eight hour day, a 12 hour day, a 4 a.m. day, that like just crazy grinding. Wow. Yeah. Is it, it's just like physically exhausting because you're just like hunched over. You but got you this get shaking ass it. thing in your arm. Like, I don't know. I feel like I could see it wearing you down over time. They got the yeah. little silent ones now, though, huh? Yeah. And the, the wireless machines ones are, are pretty light. And once you're into it, like, like I said, people know me for my style now because like I do those bigger pieces and. Um, like people are coming to me and people are flying here too. Right. Probably like 90% of my clientele is from out of town. Yeah. Are you guys, so, you're like a destination because it's probably not that much foot traffic, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Exactly. Every artist pretty much like booked up by appointment. We get a few walk ins here and there, but mm. um, people are coming to me for like half sleeves. Like they're only in LA for, you know, two days. They booked the whole trip for this tattoo. So really? once I lay out the design and really get into it, like you just get in the zone. And I'm, then next thing you know, eight hours have passed. And yeah. it's like, oh shit, I gotta eat. And then you eat and then you get back to it. And then another four hours have passed. Cause thinking about that, if you're a fan of the show and you can go and like spend a couple thousand bucks and you get to hang out with your favorite fucking person <laughs> from this show for like five for hours. Selfie that, with- I mean, that must be like the sickest thing. You got your friend filming, Are, is yeah. that allowed? Mm -hmm. You, you can film and stuff in the yeah, shop? Yeah, yep, absolutely. Wow. Have you ever had it be, like, almost kind of weird where, like, they, they're, they like, too excited to meet you? Um, I've been lucky. I've been mm. lucky to not have too many weird experiences. I have had people that are, like, super, super nervous, mm. and they just won't say nothing the whole time. <laughs> right. And I'm thinking, like, are they cool? Like, are they happy with the tattoo? And then, like, once they get home, they'll send an email, like, I'm sorry, I was so, I was just, you know, and they're like, okay, good, as long as you like your work. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. So at this point, you're kind of in the position where you could choose what tattoos you do. So you get to be like real choosy about it. Like, are you super particular or how do you approach that? Um, I just take like larger projects mm -hmm. pretty much. So people are, um, if they have the budget and they're like, you know, open to just letting me do my thing creatively, like those are the best clients. And that's mm -hmm. when I do my best work. You know, they can give me like a little bit of direction and then, 
um, now technology, you have the iPads, I can like put together the whole design for them and they love it and mm. I can just do my thing. Right. But like if I get an email like, hey, I wanna get a name, it's like, we're not, I'm not doing names. You're not doing names. Yeah, but I can direct you to someone in my shop who, you know, does like the smaller stuff. But for me, like you gotta book a full day. You because the art piece. Mm. Right. And some people like, that might be kind of their thing, right? Is that they like doing like really mm -hmm. cool calligraphy or whatever. Yep. Like I got this little self-made, oh, tiny nice. little tattoo. Um, but the girl, like she specialized in like this t teeny tiny stuff. Like How this costs a take? lot of money. How long <laughs> like, did it take? Like five minutes. Yeah, like probably like 20, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yep. You got any tattoos you regret? Nope. I got live without regrets tattooed on my hip. Nice. Do you yeah. have any? Do you have cover-ups? Yep. Really? <laughs> Otherwise, I don't have any cover-ups. That's why I don't really have any tattoos I regret, because they're all covered up. Oh, you yeah. Cover, what you cover up? All kinds of bullshit. I covered up my baby mama name. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, though. I covered up a girl's name. A couple girls' names, really. I put really? the Batman symbol right there. A Batman symbol? Yeah. How long right Over after her you name? guys broke yeah. up? <laughs> it's like Batman defeated her. <laughs> like, <laughs> you threw up the bad signal and he came down. And went, oh, oh. <laughs> Damn. Did you wait a long time? I I, I got with my, my second baby mama. And, oh, she, and she was she like, was, she wasn't having it. She was like, you got her tatted on your arm. You need to get rid of it. Mm. I was like, all right. So and did you I, get second baby mama's name tatted? Nah. No? Not yet. We're not together anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> my girl was trying to get a tattoo on my name like early on in the relationship, and I was like, nah, you're bugging. I got my man's face. Hey. That's fire. <laughs> How long you guys been together? Um, Two and a half years, almost three years. How'd you meet? Um, Through tattoos. Oh. Uh -huh. Yep, I tatted him back in 2013. Right. Mm -hmm. And that just sparked this connection? Well, we just stayed friends for like a long time and then back in like right when the pandemic hit it was like early 2020 he came and got another tattoo and this time he was single and i was single and this was the most that we've ever talked during a tattoo session because he's gotten tattoos from me over the years but he was always really quiet and a, he lot, was a lot of people got <laughs> booed up to start the pandemic it yeah. was a great time to get booed up <laughs> everybody got a little closer or they got more disconnected well, everybody held on to the shit that they had within arm's reach like oh i could i could date you shit all right come on not, yeah. not to that say is, that yours is a real thing that is, that is true i've seen it happen with so <laughs> many people that is true yeah my mom was calling us the COVID couple <laughs> <laughs> but we literally spent the whole pandemic just like together so yeah but you've transitioned into normal life well mm -hmm. since then because i feel like that's the test yeah can you live in a world where you actually go out at night yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah damn and now you got two kids yeah wow <laughs> That's a blessing. Real, real out fast. here. That's amazing. You That's next, real. man. With two kids? I was going to ask. Because mm -hmm. I regret not having, like, my children. Back to back. Man, because, like, you know. Just get it out of the way? You think that's a move? Yeah, because, like, my daughter's 13 and my son is three. And it's like, they don't have nothing in common. Mm -hmm. My daughter goes to her room. She closes the door. Her brother's trying to get in the room. He's crying and really? stuff. Like, yeah, it's just He's sad like, to away. watch. Yeah. Mm. Well, they're also with different women. That is true. <laughs> 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 Fuck. Um, okay. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of tattoo artists playing what I would call the clout game in the mm -hmm. sense of pulling up on rappers, pulling up to people's hotels and shit, you know, just like always trying to do tattoos for the, the newest, coolest like rapper or whatever. And I've seen it work for people where mm -hmm. I like observe them getting shitloads of followers and that sort of leads them to tattooing other people but i also feel like it's kind of looked down upon by some people in the tattoo world because it looks a little thirsty mm -hmm. uh wh what is your perspective on that so that's a really really good question i see that all the time too mm -hmm. you know and i get all kinds of um celebrities and rappers and stuff who like reach out and they expect you know free work because mm -hmm. you have people who would do free tattoos and just follow them on tour just to tattoo them and their entourage and stuff like that and for me that was never that didn't go with my vision mm -hmm. like you know I, i'm i'm the celebrity right. you know so that that was more like my goal in 
what I wanted. It, it has worked for a lot of, lot of people. Like I've seen people blow up off that. Like that's literally how they get their start and then they get this huge platform and then they can open their shop and it leads them to their goals. Mm. I just personally didn't take that approach, but there's nothing wrong with it. But I just wasn't doing free tattoos or discounted tattoos because I was more about my money. Mm. I was always about my money at the end of the day. I mean, I could see it making sense early in your career. Right. But mm -hmm. where you're at now definitely doesn't seem like it would make sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah but even much. then, even when I first started, like when I first got that big name trying to fly me out to tattoo, it was okay, what, what's it going to be? What's going to make it worth it for me to walk away, for me to reschedule my clients at home, mm. fly out of town, you know, like that's a lot, you know? Yeah. So it was always a price tag mm. on that. It was never just like, oh, okay, like I'll just go just for free travel. Like, You seem like you got a really good head on your shoulders. Who do you thank for that? Uh, both my parents. Really? Mm -hmm. They both? Yeah, they're both pretty, mm. pretty smart, business-minded, strong-minded. Um, probably my brothers too, being the only girl, mm. like just being like not picked on, but like always told like, Get you that tough skin. Yeah, exactly. Have you always just been like moving laterally towards your goals throughout your life? Was there ever any time where you were kind of fucked up or where the vision wasn't working out or you felt demotivated, depressed? Uh, Probably when I was dropping out of school. That's when you were unsure. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm at this big university and you got all these people chasing these big degrees. I'm failing half my classes. I'm a shitty tattoo artist. Mm. And at that point it was like, cause at first, when I first started doing tattoos, I was popping. Like I was, you know, the tattoo girl on campus, it was cool. But then after a few years in college and you're not progressing this way or that way, and you see everybody else about to graduate and I had felt relationships. I was staying there for the wrong reasons. Like just, I was going through it, like mm. really going through it. Um, that was probably like the hardest time. And then again, too, quitting the show. Mm. Like you're quitting this TV show that you're filming with your best friends. You know, I'm being told by major executives that I can't follow my dreams because it doesn't go along with this. Mm. Like I was drinking real heavy all the time. That was playing out on TV. Like. It was just, yeah. Yeah, because I seen a clip, like, when I was just watching clips on the show, I seen a clip where she's screaming at this dude, like, you were eating my <laughs> pussy oh my all God. summer. <laughs> <laughs> and I hadn't really, like, seen that much. This is, like, the second clip I clicked on, and I'm like, oh, wow. And that very much does not really, like, line up with the, the version of you that no, I feel like I've been right talking now. to. <laughs> Yeah, like, and, and that's what I, I appreciate that about television, though, because, like, I went through all kinds of shit, but like people go through stuff like that all the time. You just don't see it on TV. Mm. So for me to have that platform, I didn't give a fuck like about what personal stuff you saw me go through. Cause when it was time for me to do a tattoo on camera, I was going to do a great tattoo. Right. But I went through a lot of bullshit on TV and towards my departure, like it was rough. It was yeah. just rough. So were yeah. you happy to get away from it? I definitely was. Absolutely. It was hard though. Like you struggle with that decision, but like, when you really, really follow your heart, then like positive things started to happen for me. Like I tried staying back, you know, for other people's purposes um, and shit wasn't going right, you know, but when I made the decision to do what was best for me, I started to get blessed, so. Mm. So that was real? Yeah. When you real. when you yelled that at that guy, okay. <laughs> yeah. he's eating your pussy all summer. Oh my God. She's, she said, "I only put my mouth on your shit once." I was like, "What the fuck?" That just made me like, "Oh my God, she is dangling these guys by a thread, just manipulate." Like, I don't know. I'm not gonna get too. You seem like you're very like, happy what? though. That was like six six years ago. Oh, six years ago. Yeah, shit. I, was like, I could tell you in a better place. Yeah, absolutely. But you look like you can snap it. You still get still, still snap. <laughs> I try not to put myself in toxic environments on television. <laughs> but okay, now looking at the tattoo game, being that you were somebody who maybe didn't necessarily come up 100% in the traditional way of coming up as a tattoo artist, what's your advice for young tattoo artists and how do you feel about people who are kind of just getting a, a kit and just starting to do it themselves out of their house? Like, how do you feel about all that? Um, I would say... Um, just pour into your craft like 100%. I think a lot of people get content in, you know, 
YouTube learning and, and tattooing out their house and, and getting that little bit of cash. But it's like always strive to elevate yourself and be professional. Like I didn't have the resources being a full time student. I couldn't get into a shop. They wouldn't hire me, you know, but that was always my goal. As soon as I got to Chicago, I found somebody to teach me. So I would just say if you're just starting, be a sponge, like mm -hmm. be a sponge, absorb all the knowledge you can um, and just always strive to elevate yourself and be professional and there are more um shops willing to to take people in and get that knowledge and if you are told no then book a tattoo from somebody that you want to learn from there's mm. always ways you can't just get discouraged by one no and just say like fuck this i'll be good teaching myself like no you're only going to stay at one level just mm. keep learning and um getting that knowledge and just pouring investing in your craft do you think it's important for a tattoo artist to have like an art background to understand, to learn yeah. about it, and like maybe even go to school for it? Yep, I think you can do it simultaneously. Like if you don't have an art background, but you're interested in art and mm. tattoos, then study art, you know, practice your drawings, like get good at art and you'll be a better tattoo artist. Mm. Mm -hmm. But that they absolutely go, in hand, go hand in hand. You know, when I was getting tattooed a shitload in Brooklyn back in the day, I remember just realizing at one point that all the tattoo artists were getting like the most pussy of anyone that I knew, <laughs> period. And then I like broke up with my girl and then all of a sudden my tattoo artist is banging her. Really? Yeah. And I'm Ooh, like, you was hot, huh? I couldn't really say shit about it because it's not like I knew him <laughs> like that, you know? It's like, I'm just paying you for tattoos, so it's like, what am I really going to say? That was the last like, time you went, That's though, fucked right? up. You banged my girl. No, I just acted like it didn't happen. I was wow. whatever, bro. But, uh, cause, and then I start thinking about it. I'm like, think about what you're doing when you're tattooing. You're like touching someone. They're literally bleeding on you. You're fucking like using this vibrating machine on their skin. Like it's such an intimate experience that it's like very easy for me to understand why girls want to bang their tattoo artists. Yeah, that was definitely a thing in Chicago. Like all the male tattoo artists like have a reputation of like, mm. you know, fucking their clients. Being swordsmen. Or, yeah, giving free tattoos Slinging on. in exchange. Does that happen a lot? Uh, yeah, that I've seen. Wow. That I've seen. You mm -hmm. look down upon that? Uh, I don't get involved. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get involved. <laughs> yeah, but I've, I've seen it. I've seen it a lot. Mm. Mm -hmm. Damn, girls who give head for a fucking tattoo. That's, I mean, sure. I guess I understand for a dope tattoo. You would? Yeah, for a dope tattoo. <laughs> You're a grimy guy. <laughs> um, yeah, but okay. So, uh, Beverly Hills. This is going good. Mm -hmm. Anything else uh, that you've been working on? Like, like, like what, what's the vision from here? Um, so right now, my main focus that's been taking up most of my time while I'm out here um, is this remodel of the shop. So mm. we made it through the pandemic. A lot of businesses. I just saw that Morton's closed down on La Cienega. Wow. But like a lot of businesses in the area have not made it. And we made it. So we're doing a complete remodel of the shop. Um, we're closed down for renovations right now, but they're almost finished. So we're gonna have the grand reopening and it's gonna be Enigma 2.0. Mm. Um, and th that's my focus right now. So I'm gonna have the, the baby um, probably in Florida. That's what we're deciding on because we have a place in Florida. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have that done before we leave. So you just fly out to Florida to have a baby? Well, I'm gonna chill there. And, right. Yeah. It's a better environment for recuperating than LA. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I had my first baby in North Carolina. Um, you just be traveling. <laughs> to North have babies, Carolina. Huh? Yeah, because we have a place in North Carolina, and my mom actually lives an hour and a half away. Uh. So um, she was able to be there and like help um, all the time. And then we got this place in Florida, and that's kind of where we've been settled. So I've been out here for the past like two and a half months and just focus on, you know, jump starting the business so that I can dip out and be mommy for filming. a couple months. Yeah. Did yep. you finish the season already? No, we're in the middle of filming right now. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Yep. Interesting. We got to come to the grand opening to film. Yeah, absolutely. So we're locking down a date right now for when we're going to have the, it's, it'll be the anniversary event because right before I leave is our four year anniversary. That'd be sick. I would love to pull up. I want so a free I'll tattoo. Get you, I'll get you guys the, the info. <laughs> we ain't going to be doing no free tattoo. <laughs> That's just That's just well, his beard is actually tattooed on, so no, maybe you no, can help him out. Drink. Oh, my God. He needs further. He needs no. to fill it in. He has everyone convinced. Does my beard look fake? 
Thank you. Would you tattoo a hairline on a guy? Ooh. No, 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 no. Like this guy T-Rell we know? He, he, he <laughs> might want to get his shit filled in a little no, bit. But no, but that, that's uh, PMU, the permanent makeup. So I do want to look into that and adding that to my shop, the really? permanent eyebrows and whatever they do. But mm. I, I don't do that. I do body art tattoos. I know this guy Fousey who got it done, but he got it done by a sketchy place that didn't do it with the right needle. So it ended up being like way too big of dots it's supposed to it's supposed to look like hair i can send you a video but it's supposed to look like hairs with like a really really tiny dots right but he got it from a, a janky ass place that did these big ass like tattoo looking ass fucking dots and it like he made a whole video about I've it i've seen so much of that in like tv shows that you watch today yeah. and like my mm -hmm. homie got a good one i think he had to get his whole dome lasered and like redone or something that is terrible yeah yeah i can't that's too cosmetic for me for mm. for a man <laughs> you against all that? I'm not against it, but like, uh, it's just a little like men getting lipo now, hairlines. Yeah, I can't. You can't BBLs with, with, with BBLs with a uh, lipo. You said BBLs. No, no BBLs. BBLs. They can they can make you taller. Now. They put a big metal rod in your leg, and it slowly yeah, no. opens up, and it'll make you like three inches taller. That just represents a lack of confidence right. in a man, Ooh. and I like a confident man. Do you think that he should get a BBL like Saucy Santana? Oh my God, <laughs> here the fuck we go. <laughs> no, are you considering it? <laughs> no, he's just waiting to get that shit off. <laughs> this nigga crazy. <laughs> Somebody made a meme and they said that that was you. I just saw that he got the cover of uh, Teen Vogue. Teen Vogue. I got to mm. read that article later, yeah. Yeah, mm. that's crazy. Damn. Um, shit, all right. Well, I appreciate you coming through. Your story you is very inspiring for, for all the people me. out there. You could do it if you fucking keep your mind to it. That's all I got <laughs> from this interview. She she worked her ass off and has gotten herself in a crazy position. Thank you so much. I hope you guys come by and check out the shop, even if you don't want to get another tattoo. I'll do it. Just I, come by. I've been thinking about getting my back done. i got to do some Googling and try to find a design I like. He wants me to oh, do yeah. drugs and get tatted with him. I'm going to have a little lean party, man. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, Pimp C. He'll look <laughs> down upon us and make sure that we're all right. Well, just make sure you know what you're getting before you start sipping. Okay, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. appreciate Thank you coming guys. in. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, and Patreon. Like, comment, subscribe. Nojumper.com if you want to support. Appreciate y'all.